Hello, hello, good morning everyone, or good afternoon. Let me know if you can hear me and see me alright, and we are about to start. Hey Rene, good to have you here again. Awesome. All right, so I have the chat right next to me. So if there's any questions or anything that you guys wanna know as I go through whatever we're gonna be doing today, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll I'll get to it at some point. Uh, I'm just trying to change the the size of the of the font. Just give me one second because I it's hard to read. Um, okay, nah, it's not a big deal. All right, so um, yeah, <laughs> hi everyone, welcome to the stream. So um, today I think it's the, it's kind of like the, the last, well, it's Halloween for most of you guys. Uh, for me, it's already the 1st of November, uh, but I think we can squeeze in a little bit of that, uh, you know, Halloween mood creature or like scary stuff um, in today. So in the past couple of streams this month, we did the Scarecrow. Um, so you can just catch up with that if you want. But in this stream, I thought uh, we could do something else, something a bit more stylized, uh, maybe like a, like a zombie, like a stylized cartoonish zombie. I think that would work um, fine, just to show you some extra tools and, and processes that uh, you might find useful. So this guy that I have in here, <laughs> I just forgot to um, to turn this off, but this is a something that I think you might find useful and interesting as well. So um, right now, this is just um, uh, my new stylized version of uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and the reason I want to show you this as a you know like a starting point here is because we are running a brand new challenge in the Discord server that is called the Art Skills Update Challenge. Um, so I about 10 years ago, maybe, roughly, I did a version of Edgar Allan Poe uh, that is probably still in my profile. And it's, you know, it's a very old sketch in ZBrush. But, um, but I thought, you know, it would be interesting to see, you know, the progression of like all these years and, you know, how I, um, how I change my, my workflows. And, you know, that at the time that Edgar Allan Poe that I did was about, you know, it, took, it was like a, like a proper project. Um, in fact, let me just see if I can do, um, I can probably show you something. So yeah, the point is that at the time it was like a proper, um, proper project. So it took me a, a few days to, to do it. Um, whereas this one was more of a, of a quick sketch. Um, I haven't finalized it, but I did that in, um, in a few hours, like maybe like three hours or something like that. So it's great to see kind of like the, the, the progress in, you know, the speed, the workflow, the tools that I use. Um, so I thought let's make a contest out of it. So this is the one that I'm talking about. So if you go to the Seabrush Guides website, just uh, make, maybe spoil this. So I'm going to click on learn more. Um, that will take you to the news page with the ch of the challenge. You can just go there. Uh, and this is the idea to kind of like uh, take a an artwork or a piece of work that you've done in the past, uh, the older, the better, and just basically remake it, redo it with newly acquired um, knowledge and skills. And then that way you can like show, show off a little bit of um, uh, your progress as well. And making it a contest make it, makes it a little bit more interesting. So this is the idea, like this is the old Poe, which I still like, it's just more like Tim Burton stylized thing uh, whereas this new one is a bit more cartoonish but you know it's slightly different so the idea is you know to do that um, here is some reference as well from one of my um, the extra mile students uh, Philip so Phil did this help um, character thingy I uh, can't remember maybe two three years ago I can't remember uh, for the extra mile and recently he just took that and improved it um, you know with new processes, new renders, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and it looks fantastic. It looks more like cinematic. So that's kind of like also what got me at the idea about this challenge. So if you're interested, go to the Zeroge Guides. Uh, it's in there. Um, you can just click on learn more and that would open up the Discord. If you don't like Discord, um, you can totally 
participate in, in, in Instagram, social media. Um, and yeah, so all the information is in there. And yeah, that's the reason why I wanted to show you this guy, right? Um, and one of the, the cool things as well is uh, that I probably would mention later, or maybe I'll just give you a, a quick rundown. Um, in the newsletter that I sent today in my email, I kind of like show you how I approach the texturing of this face and the, you know, because it, it looks rather complex, but it's a really easy trick once you get the hang of it um, and you can create these very complex textures, um, you know, rather quickly. So the, um, I'm going to cover that really quickly before we get into today's character, just because I want to give you like a quick recap. But um, everything is step by step in that um, newsletter that I sent uh, this morning, right? Um, so let me just show you that first because it's like a cool thing and then we can move on into today's uh, character. All right, so I'm just going to um, go into a sphere. Click on Make Polymesh 3D and I have this Skin Shade 4 and let's, um, let's assume that this is a face. Actually, we probably need to do a bit of sculpting. I'll do something very quick. Um, you know, just to indicate that this is kind of like a face. And that way, we have something to go on. Nothing, nothing too crazy. <laughs> In fact, this is nothing at all. Um, I just want to have some like crevices so that I can show you this process that I'm about to show you. Um, hi, Jin. Kind of uh, off topic. Can I import a 3D model from Zbrush to 3D Stager with no UVs? Yeah, absolutely. Just export it as a as an FBX. Uh, they actually just updated. Uh, I I can't be, I can't remember if it is like a recent update, but I know that now you can apply a um, a material with a tri planar projection. So you in theory don't need any any UVs to to do that. I mean, you don't need any UVs. Um, in stage or to be able to import it, but to apply a material before you had to, otherwise you wouldn't see anything. Uh, but now you can, apparently. That's that's the word on the street. <laughs> that, that it's, um, I haven't tried it, but you can do tri planner. Oh, actually, I'm lying. I think, yeah, I've tried it and it works perfectly fine. Yeah, so sh long story short, you can. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's like a Marmoset tool bag. It is. Um, it is not necessarily, but it does have ray tracing. So the, the quality is like on par. Um, it's just like slightly different, but but yeah, you can just set up like the this um, the PBR workflow and all of that. So yeah, I think Marmoset would be a, a good comparison. Nowadays, most, you know, renderers can kind of give you a, a very convincing effect. Very good quality. Um, but yeah, I, I just love it because of the, you know, the simple fact that it connects so well with the with the other apps. Um, but yeah, I could take this and export it as an FBX or OBJ, and and that's it. You can you can render it in um, uh, Stager. All right, I think I was I'm spending way too much time on this one, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna do a quick serial mesh up uh, using my hang on formation uh dyna to subdeep uh which i've explained in the in a 
you know, in previous streams, this button right here is just a macro I created that uh, freezes the subdivision levels, run a series measure process, projects the details of the saved or um, frozen details, and then now we have a nicer topology in this phase. But I can go back here and then do reconstruction. Maybe one more. Ah, oh, it's fine. So now we have a, a cleaner topology. If I wanted to detail this a bit more, I can. Uh, but I have these now with three subdivision levels. And, you know, this should be fine to, again, it's just an example of what I wanted to show you in terms of the, uh, the texturing tools. But again, I kind of like need, I mean, this is all blobby and rubbish, but I just want to have these sort of crevices so that it works a bit better. Um, anyway, so let's select the standard brush and uh, let's have a look. Uh, it's recently sub to your YouTube channel of the content. Awesome. Seabrush workflow is part of the game ready character creation pipeline. Um, yeah, so I mean that that is like a whole workflow, <laughs> really. But you can take anything that um, that I've shared in the past here in this channel, or in my YouTube channel, or even in the Seabrush guides, and it's just about how you polish it and how you optimize things if you want to put it into a game engine. Um, but yeah, you just need to know the the requirements of it, and and that's it. But it's it's, it's relatively easy once you uh, understand like topology workflows and that sort of thing. You can just convert anything into a game ready character. Um, is the G button next to your CRT sub button a macro? E uh, yes. So what this is, is like literally to grab um, details. So for example, uh, this is called, let's see. I'm going to show you what this is. Uh, I want to take this brush and I'm going to do something like this. Like for details. Right, so let's say this is a, a quick custom detail that I did, um, and then I can go to the extractor brushes, which I remove from my. Yep, here we go. So I can go uh, extractor drag rec. Click on that one, um, and this one allows you to essentially capture these details. Right, so if I click on G, that's the same thing as going in here. Can't remember exactly where it is. Maybe it's in the alpha, <laughs> because I've been using this macro for a while. I uh, can't remember where it is now, but it's pressing the letter G. Maybe it's in the stroke palette. Can't remember anyway. Um, well, <laughs> maybe it's in the stroke palette actually. Uh, someone will remember. Uh, so basically, what I do with this is click on that and you'll see my my cursor changes so I'm gonna go for a larger size I'm gonna click on G and then I, I can click and drag and that basically is gonna capture those details that I that I placed and now this brush becomes um, let's also um, where is it surface you know I, I can add these details like that that is why I have this here, but I haven't used it in a long time. Um, if you don't get, if you don't want to get this distortion, this weird kind of like blobby thing, um, that is kind of like from like the angle that you do it. But if you don't want any of that, you can just go back in time, hold the control key, set a point in time, go back, like go forward a bit, and then do it again. And that way, it's just going to capture only the changes from that sort of like flat surface and the new details. It's not going to try to calculate the, the height. So now you get a much cleaner, as you can see, alpha. So if you look, compare the alpha that I just created, this one with that one, I, you know, it's a world of difference. And that's just because I saved a point, right? So that's what the G is for, um, which is exactly the same thing as pressing G in your keyboard by default, and that will bring that in. So uh, let's undo all of that and go back to my original 
idea of this head that I wanted to show you. Um, uh, Gene, can you render a high poly with vertex color only in 3D Stager? I don't know if you can render vertex color. I haven't tried it. Might be, might be good. Um, a good thing. Uh, you can do that in Marmoset. set. Um, hey Pablo, thanks for you. No worries, man. Um, did you ever take a break? <laughs> yeah. Um, I try to. I'm planning for a for a long break this um this holiday season. We'll see how we go. Uh, pers perspective is currently on. It is. Um. Can we get this UI? Yeah. If you just go, Chris, to my YouTube channel. Um. There is a video, or just go to the Zeroge Guides website, and my UI is in there. I can download f this same setup for right-handed people and for um, left-handed people. Um, okay, so go back to going back to what I was trying to show you before. Um, I'm gonna go to the Skin Shade Four, and I'm gonna take my standard brush. I'm gonna turn off the lazy mouse, pressing L. The Z add, which is for you here under the draw palette. Um, and I'm going to leave symmetry on and I'm going to turn on RGB also on the draw palette. You can enable that. So just by doing that, and this is the reason I have it here in my palette, I just converted the standard brush into a painting brush. All right. So what I want to do is I want to select a color like this. All right. I want to click on fill object and that's going to be my base. And then I'm gonna change my brush size or my brush stroke and like painting brush really to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna go. Uh, let's do that here from the stroke palette. And sorry, stroke palette. I'm gonna select the spray or the spray color, which you can click on the thumbnail, click color spray, and that way, if I select let's say a darker color, or a reddish color like this, and I go and I press really hard, you see there's um, a lot of well, not a lot of, but there's quite a few color variation happening, uh, which is kind of like what I want. Uh, but I want to exaggerate this even more, so I'm going to also go to this to the alpha palette, and I'm going to select something like alpha eight. I quite like this one, or anything organic like this would work. So if I do this, you see, and also because I'm using a you know a Wacom Cintiq, I can press really softly, or start pressing a little bit harder, and that way I can sort of like blend this thing. But this is what I what I mean about it. Like it's really simple. Like I just change a, a standard brush, make it a, a painting brush. I select it as a stroke and a an alpha, like a particular alpha, and then you get all of these things happening for free, right? Um, and what's great about it is that I can use the C key to, um, like the C is to pick up a color, like a, the color picker. And I can just select something from here and I can start integrating that with the rest. So that's what I'm going to do just to show you this technique, right? Um, and by the way, this preview flat here in my UI is, you know, the normal preview and the flat which you can find here under the render palette. All I'm doing is this. So these two buttons, I place them in my UI. And that's when I'm doing poly painting, it's a lot easier to see, uh, you know, a shadeless version of the mesh. So with this uh, slightly reddish tone, I'm going to go ahead and target some of these areas. Kind of like with the with you know most of the blood vessels would be, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to um, all I want is to generate a a bit of variation in the in the base color, but it could be subtle, right? All right, let's try something a bit more saturated and blue just for this kind of like hollow areas. Uh, and the way that I kind of like decide on these colors uh, is pretty simple. So anything that is bone and that is close to the surface, so like cheekbones, forehead, uh, the bridge of the nose, the chin, um, is kind of like yellowish. So I'm going to exaggerate it, but that's kind of like how I place these colors. Right? So that's that's the idea. So these areas, roughly. Uh, then anything that it is hollow or that, you know, if you think about the skull, like the, the orbit, like the eyes, um, the nose a bit, the, the mouth or like on the sides of the, the cheeks, depending on the, how much fat there is as well in the, in the face, those are areas that are a little bit like 
blue like hollow and then the the more reddish or red areas of the face are with this like a concentration of like blood vessels so around the eyes a little bit um the nose the nostrils right um obviously the mouth and that's how i decide on these colors but you know it's it looks a bit like a like a clown right but that's fine once i have this i'll just go with something more like a plain color and and integrate everything just pressing slightly on this so this is like the first pass right so if you look at this one it looks nothing like this example that i have here of poe because uh, i already went through the process and plus this one already has like sculpted details where you know this example is just you know very 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 plain right but this one has already this process that i that i'm going to show you so so now that i have this um, as a starting point what i want to do is Add more variation, but as I do that, create um, create a, a more realistic skin. So um, you can do a few things. If you want, and there's yeah, there's like probably three ways of doing the same thing, right? Uh, but the principle is the same. So the first one that you can do is select the history brush, the history recall brush. This one right here. So B H R. And this history brush, what it does is once you set a point in the timeline, it is going to remember that point and then you can just recall anything from there. Uh, whether it's polypaint or sculpted details, it's literally a projection of that. So it's kind of like the, the same thing of a, having a, a morph target and then being able to go back in time. But with this one, you can just put it anywhere. So the the comp like the the um, the confusing thing about this workflow that I'm going to show you is that we're going to set a point in the present right now where we are then we're going to go back in time and start editing things from the future and then we're going to override anything that we did in the present <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm that it's a bit confusing when you say it like this but you see it's, it's going to be pretty simple so uh step 1 is just selecting the the well, actually, step one is to have a base like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, just slightly different colors. Step two is selecting the history recall brush. And step three would be to bring in uh, the adjust colors, which you find uh, poly paint under the poly paint palette. This one right here. So adjust color. And this, this is this, this palette, right? So um, the idea here is just to add more contrast and add a change of color. Right. So let's say if I want to um, go for like a darker eye bag kind of thing, like what I did with Poe, I would go with this and, you know, add a bit more, change the intensity, maybe add more saturation and then start playing around with the RGB intensity. And then just bring kind of like the, the darker colors. Like this. And you see how much um, variation there is already, and that is all from that very basic pass that we did uh, and that's what i want i want to be able to create this this match variation so you know this more like a zombie skin right or similar and i'm going to click ok so here is where um that confusing thing about setting things in the present and going back in the past and all of that mm, start to make sense so in the timeline if i go one back to this point this is what we have right now in the current state we have these changes of the color so with the history brush um, i'm going to hold the control key and i'm going to click on the present so right now where we are with these blue colors so now zeros recorded this moment in time with these colors in that history brush uh memory right so i'm going to go back now in time so I'm, i can click uh, control z or undo or just just go back right and you'll see that the orange thing here is indicating where we are right now in zero timeline or undo history but that white line also indicates where um where we save that point so now if i go ahead and by the way you cannot uh you cannot use the the symmetry with this brush because it is a projection brush so i'm going to turn symmetry off um, and I'm going to take this one, this history brush, and I'm going to convert it into um, a painting brush, which at the moment, I'm going to reset it because, yeah, by default, it's like this. So I'm going to turn off CSOP, and I'm going to leave the RGB on. 
right? And I'm also going to right click and change the focal shift so that it's not as intense and maybe the RGB intensity, I'm going to bring that up as well. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. Right? And as you see, it is painting, it is going to grab that point that we saved in time, but as soon as we do anything, it's going to override that point. That's what I'm saying, it's kind of like overriding what you said in the future. <laughs> it's like a bit confusing. So now we don't see that, right? Because we overread overreading that, that step. Um, another thing you can do is literally change the same things that you did in the standard brush with the history recall. So in the stroke palette, I'm going to select the color spray and the alpha like so. And now we just have basically the same brush as the standard brush. But what we're doing now is painting with that state that we saved at some point. So it's, it might be a little bit confusing, but that's how you can create like really cool and easy complex textures. So I'm going to do a little bit of this and then show you something else that we can, we can play around with. Um, so just keep in mind that the, the state that we save is kind of like this darker bluish tone but you can do anything, anything you want, right? Um, yeah, so that, that's in a nutshell. So this is the, the simplest workflow that I, that I follow. Um, so anytime that I want to change or, or variate things a little bit, um, I can just go back and, you know, click, do the same thing, basically. I can just go to um, adjust colors, and this time I'm just gonna take this whole thing and add on top of it. So. Let's go for more of a plain yellow tone like that. Click OK. Same thing with the history brush, control, and then go back once. And then I start painting with this new, um, this new newly recorded setting. So it's a, it's a little bit lighter. It's a bit harder to see here. Hopefully this is not too confusing. It's a, it's a pretty cool method, actually, once you get the hang of it. Um, so like I said, there's like always multiple ways of doing the same thing in ZBrush. So I'm going to show you something else that you can do, right? Um, which is, you know, doing the same thing or like the same workflow. Um, you can take your mesh and you can duplicate it. I'm going to go into solo mode. Um, if you see this red bar here at the top left, that indicates that there is a recorded history point in a different subtool. So it might just give you issues. So what I, what I like to do is just hold the control key, click once, and then click once again, and that removes any history point, right? So um, let's, gonna, let's call this, this phase, um, let's rename it, let's call it, I don't know, blue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it one more time, and I'm gonna call this one, oops. Yep, yeah, let's call this one uh, red. And let's do another one, duplicate, rename green. Right? So uh, I'm in solo mode, so I'm gonna take the green one and I'm gonna click on adjust colors and I'm gonna try to tint it with a bit of green as well. Maybe add a bit more contrast to it. Click OK. So that's the green one. The red, I'm gonna follow the same process, adjust color. And the blue one, same thing. All right. So now this one, it's, um, it's called head. That's the one, that's my, my working file. This is where I want to do all of this, right? So now what you can do is, and, and it's, this is like the, the crazy thing about the history brush or the history recall brush is that um, you can set a recall point or save a point in a separate subtool or even a separate tool altogether as long as they um, inhabit kind of like the same vertex space or volume. So you can just recall colors from one to the other. So if I select the green one, you see I don't have many points in here. I can hold the control key set the point in here, go back to this one, and then I can paint with that green color, which is awesome. So that way you can recall things from different subtools and then have like the same kind of like complex palette, but um, 
yeah so in in different areas so i'm going to work on just one side um just to show you how how easy this is once you have a very basic palette and how complex you can go and just keep in mind that i'm not even using masking methods at the moment um which once you have like a sculpted details that's just gonna you know give you a whole new level of um complexity right and let's say i have one i want now the uh the blue tones i'm gonna hold control in here go back in here and then i'm just gonna add some of those blue blue tones right uh but the reason why i want to show you this is because even though the base yeah, the base uh, texture is really, really simple. When we start variating those tiny hues and, and brightness, when we paint, it's not just painting one color, it's painting from that source. And that makes it like really, really complex. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the red one now. And I'm just gonna target these areas here, maybe a bit more from here. Okay, um, and then once you're happy with kind of like this, this blending of the different colors, uh, you can even create something that is a bit more uh, simple. So I can just take, let's say the, yeah, the same head or maybe this blue one, duplicate it, uh, adjust color. So I'm gonna go for, I would say a more realistic cleaner skin. Well, you could have saved like the original, to be honest, but actually, let me show you something else that's really cool. So, I mean, this one looks fine, but if you have the, the original, you can go back to the time where you had your base, like this, right? And you're happy with this color. You can recall that undo history. So I can click on control now, click on that one, go forward, and now I can bring back some of these colors from the original again. That's why this method, I, I think it's just fantastic to do this type of stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm using that all on do history point to sort of like integrate all of these colors a little bit. And then that's it. Now I can use something like the compute, for example, click on compute. Uh, I'm gonna switch now to the standard brush, uh, which gives me kind of like the same thing because we have the same stroke and the same alpha. Um, and I did I compute it? Yep. Invert this, the, the mask. I'm going to hide it and I'm going to select just a darker tone here. And that way I can sort of like target, the, target these um, crevices a bit more. So if you had, um, you know, sculpted details, it would look a lot better. Uh, but yeah, so if I go into flat, you see there's a lot of, a lot of hues and variation. Um, so it started to look a bit more interesting. And keep in mind that I've only used one type of alpha and one type of stroke. But when you combine it with other ones, um, then your, your texture becomes like a lot more uh, interesting. So I, for example, can take the alpha 22 and stroke drag red, and I'm gonna use a red tone for like some blood vessels here, right? And I can click and drag a bit darker than that. I think what we need is more. Um, yeah. Oops. More resolution. Turning down the RGB intensity a bit. All of this needs to be subtle. There we go. So starting to add um, some of these blood vessels. Right? Just to make it more realistic. Um, and you can also select the spray. And let's go for something like alpha 40, which is this little dot. And then go for something like this. It's like even hard to see. 
I'm going to press really hard in these areas or maybe here so that you can really see the effect. Right? So very subtle. So if you start adding those dots, it's a subtle thing, but um, it all adds up, right? And that's how I got to this point. But again, remember that I have, for this one, for this concept, I already have the, uh, you know, the details um, that, you know, that helps you to, to get to this point a little bit faster. So let's say for, for this guy right here, um, I could bring in, uh, let's go for brushes. Uh, and these brushes are in the zbrushguides.store um, that I can share with you guys later if you want. So in the skin brushes, um, let's see. So if you go here, if you go to resources in the zbrush guides, uh, you can get them from the zbrush guides straight in here. Oh, by the way, um, I forgot <laughs> this, um, this guy here. This is from um, a new pack that I released recently after the Adobe Max conference. Um, so I did a, a workshop in the Adobe Max this year to basically reproduce this, this thing in 3D. So if you're interested in this type of like clay materials, um, you can click on this thing and you can get it from here. Yeah, forgot to mention, this is a, like a cool one that might be of interest for you guys. So I, yeah, I created this, this pack and with this pack you can, you know, create this type of things like a clay look. This is the default uh, frog project in ZBrush as well. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's kind of cool. It's a different way to uh, at least present your work in progress and uh, something different, just a, a fresh look, I suppose. Um, and if you want, there is a tutorial as well. So in the tutorials page, um, this one right here, the latest one, uh, in this tutorial, I show you how to create this type of material, right? Like how to build one from scratch using ZBrush and Substance 3D uh, Painter. Uh, anyway, go back to the resources that I was talking about and that I'm going to showcase. Um, this one right here. So you can go to the ZBrush pack and just get it from here, or you can click on this button and it will take you to the dedicated um, page, right? Where you can get, you know, if you go to brushes in the ZBrush Guide store, um, yeah, you can just click on this one and that's the one that I'm, that I'm going to use, right? Or you can just do it from, from here, either or. Uh, so yeah, so here, let's say I'm going to start with skin base one. And skin base one, what it does is just a, a very, let's turn this off as well. It's a very basic pass, right? So you can just give it a little bit of a direction to this. I'm going to concentrate on one area. I'm not going to do the whole thing, obviously. And this works really well if you saved um, each one of these passes in a layer so that you, then you can combine it, um, the layers all together. Right, so this is why I have it like one, two, three, four, and four. Uh, yeah, and four. So skin one. Then the second one. So second pass, we just to add a bit of like these bumps. Um, and obviously, this is not necessarily for everything, but it's just to add a bit of that sort of bumpiness and irregularity of the dermis. So that's it. Let's do the third one. So it depends as well as how you apply this. So all of these are sculpting brushes, so you can just kind of like determine the, uh, the flow of the details, like the directionality of it. Um, so I'm just applying this in with a little bit of um, circular motion and then the fourth one is actually a smooth brush so if i press this the uh, the shift key i can access that and i can also yeah yeah hold in this the smooth key it's very similar to the um i did this fourth brush or this fourth pass of the brush i did it based on the smooth details uh no sorry smooth peaks details so it's very similar you can just use that one um i just tweaked a, a couple of things to yeah, to just refine it and fine tune it. So yeah, this this kind of like gives you the that sort of bumpiness and starting point. Obviously, I think it might be a little bit too strong, but it's just to show you the the process, right? Um, yeah, definitely too too strong. Um, but yeah, it's just to show you the process, right? And then um, once I have this, I can just go ahead and you know let's use this this brush that will give you those stretchy pores for this area. 
Um, I'm just gonna do a couple of them like really quickly, maybe. Maybe maybe these skin imperfections. Uh, for the eyelids, uh, I could use something like um, oh, let's add a bit of this cheekbones pores. Right, and obviously I'm doing this like extremely fast and not really thinking about this, but um, ideally you want to have a bit more, you know, be more um cautious about how you applied all of this, right? But yeah, the the point that I'm trying to make here is one once you have details, it doesn't have to be with these brushes, obviously, is you know whatever you feel comfortable with your process to add details, but once you have them, um then the the painting tools that are or the technique that I just show you um it's a it's a really easy thing to to get into so just with that um very rough way of um building stuff it's gonna go back into the painting mode so now I have these details and I can utilize something like the masking tools to go to uh, let's say uh, mask by smoothness right and it targets those sort of like really smooth areas. I can go to adjust, open up the profile, reset that and apply slight blurring as to it. And then maybe invert it, hide the mask. And then I can use similar colors around here, but then maybe with a lighter tone. And then I can just start targeting those areas a little bit, maybe invert it and then hide it again and use more of a red tone like so All right clear the mask and you see we started to generate some nice variations as well it's still very strong but um, you can see how powerful this could be uh, I'm gonna use the cavity now mask by cavity and that targets the cavities obviously let's blur that um, a couple times or maybe the other way around and invert it hide the mask and now we have this kind of like deep pores that we can target with a red color or saturated maybe and all of these things that I'm showing you right now are like super strong right and when it comes to like working on something like this um, it's it's all about the subtleties really but um, yeah, I just want to show you clear the mask so now I have all of this nice effect and I can now use a different tone just sort of like blending things a little bit. So you see, once you have like details, you can follow the same sort of principle, the same sort of flow um, or workflow, but then just spend more time in certain areas to, you know, bring them closer to a, a more realistic skin. But you can totally do that with poly paint um, and this, yeah, this process. So if I go into flat, you see, there's a, a lot of variation here and that's what I'm going for and yeah so that in a nutshell <laughs> that that extremely fast process of you know covering details and, and texturing that's what I use uh, to generate this more complex um, texture and and details but that's yeah that's basically that's basically it so um that took about <laughs> 40 minutes of the stream so um, let me know guys if you have any questions about this uh, otherwise we can jump into a quick concept for um, Halloween although you know this is Edgar Allan Poe so I you know it's still I think it f fits the the ha Halloween vibe quite well uh, let's have a look Is there a way to make the, the history brush work with symmetry? Nope. Like not not like as you as you use it. There's ways of like um let's say mirror this the, the poly paint, for example. So you can just paint on one side and then just mirror that poly paint. You can do that. Um that is but there's no way of using the symmetry. Uh, so you can do this uh, flip by possible uh, but possible symmetry or mirror by possible symmetry 
Uh, let's let me try this and see if it works in here. Oops, don't do that. Um, you can mirror it first, so you can flip the polypane to this side, and then you can mirror by possible. So it will do it from the negative to the positive. Um, I think it should have done it. Mm, what you can do is just mask. Uh, those I haven't used this technique for ages, but you, if you mask something like this, you can mask as well by change points. So. You can flip that, and then it saves, like it preserves these ones, like what you mask. So you could do that. So you can mask um, one side, like blur it a little bit, and then flip by postal symmetry with, and like the, the side that you're flipping masked out, and then you preserve both. So you can do that, but not directly with the history recall brush. So that's not possible, unfortunately. Um, Cool. Saludos desde Colombia. Hola. Hola Juan Manuel. Saludos desde Ecuador. Uh, can you project polypaint into UVs at all? Um, I assume that what you want is to convert your polypaint into a texture. I think that that's what the question is going for. You can absolutely do that. You can take, let's say, this head, uh, going to the lower subdivision level. Let's just do some quick polypane, uh, sorry, uh, polygroups. So that we can do um, UVs. So I'm going to do quick UVs for this guy. That's it. All right, so now I have UVs in the lowest subdivision level. I have all my details and color in the highest subdivision level. Uh, you can just go to texture. Oh, first, you can go to UV map and determine the size of your texture. So I can go for 4K. And now in the texture map, you can go to create and click on new from polypane. So if I click on that, um, you'll see now I have a texture based on the polypane. So you can do that. Um, that's that's what I assume the question is about polypainting into UVs or like converting it to, into a into a texture. Um, so yeah, that's it. Cool. So let's go ahead and do something cool and quick because we don't have much time now after this explaining this uh, technique. But um, I think we can go for something. We can do something interesting. Let's go ahead and select a cube, make polymesh 3D, and scale this I'm gonna block something quickly and then we can you know play around with some stuff uh, I'm gonna actually let's do dynamish and polish I'm going to select the smooth stronger and then with symmetry I'm just going to smooth this out a bit so that is not a perfect cube. And this is going to be the head of the, the zombie. <laughs> um, okay, so let's use the same tool, duplicate it, rotate it, let's get out of solo mode. Uh, and we're going to use this one to create a, a mouth bag for this zombie guy. It might need to be a bit bigger. All right. So um, with this selected in this place, I'm going to click on this icon to uh, subtract it and enable live booleans so that we can clearly see where this is going. <laughs> this is going to be the, the mouth bag. All right. Uh, I'm just going to start blocking things out like this. All right. Uh, if I want to make this a bit rounded here, I can use the gear icon, I can go to um, taper, and I can taper this side like this a bit. And of course, remove, let's say, the tapering on the Y. 
but I think it works. It works fine. So let's click OK. Uh, and let's do the same thing. So I'm going to append a sphere. Select that sphere. Move it forward. And these are going to be the eyes of this guy. Actually, let's, like, let's leave this one for now. Um, I'm going to append a torus. And I'm going to use this kind of like for the eyelids. And I'm going to inflate that as well just to make it a bit thicker. Like that. And we can potentially just go for a slightly, slightly different eye here. Just play with, uh, with asymmetry a bit. Yeah, I think that works. Clear that. Uh, and now I can take the sphere and place it around there for the eye. But I'm going to use this one to subtract all of this mesh. And I think we need to have a bit more, more meat in there. Um, OK, so this is just like a very quick blocking, right? Uh, let's hold control and maybe, yeah, just to create the, the other eye. I think this one could be like a very, very big eye, whereas this one could be very tiny. Just to play again with the, with the asymmetry of it. Um, all righty, let's push this one back a bit. So very extreme, <laughs> like very simple uh, block out, right? Uh, we'll make it look better, I hope. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and add a few more things. Uh, maybe take this guy down slightly. Change the expression. Yeah, I think that's better. Um, I'm going to do a couple more things. So I'm going to append a cylinder that I'm also going to taper, like so. And then play around a little bit with the with the profile here. And this is gonna be the nose. I know this looks silly right now, but I just wanna I just wanna show you how powerful the the blocking of something is before we go anything uh we go any further. All right, so that's going to be the nose, maybe smaller than that. And it's all, um, you know, when you have, um, when you're blocking something like this, right, like super simple, it's all about the proportions and how you place things. So that's why I'm keeping it like relatively, you know, loose. So if I just move the, you know, the placement of the head, and now I have the, the mouth back, like, really low. It makes a huge difference in terms of the, the character personality if I just change it like this. So by blocking this out, like, like in this way, even though it looks silly and simple, um, you can determine the personality of your character. Like, this one looks a little bit more, you know, you change, you change the, whole, the whole thing. So I'm going to go for something like this. Um, just for fun. Uh, let's do a couple more things to block things out. So I'm going to use this time, um, you know what, we can use as another cylinder. So append cylinder. Uh, but this time I'm going to take this cylinder, scale it in the Y axis, just to make it a little bit more, um, a bit thinner, right? And then I'm going to use the taper and I want to tape taper this side and this side as well and then play around with this profile right so it creates like a couple of tapers uh, or like tapering the, the cylinder in both sides and then I'm also going to use the bend arc and I'm just going to do this and use the wide cone to just sort of like bring it closer click OK um, and then I'm going to use this one to essentially Add some wrinkles, some very thick wrinkles. Is 
there and full control and duplicate another one there and yeah I think that that works um, all right so a couple more things let's add a cube take that cube we can scale it down we can dynamish it we can polish it and now we can use the taper deformer and we can also use the smooth all deformer so very quickly with a cube a taper deformer and a smooth deformer we have you know the basis for a uh, tooth and then we can use the bend arc to just give it a slight bend right so I'm gonna use this tool to place this inside the mouth now the cool thing about this very simple block out as well is that I can take this guy right and I can use my move brush and then just push things forward and smooth things out as well just to again just give it a bit more shape but we're gonna keep things super simple with this guy it's gonna be very stylized um, but I just want to show you how how cool blocking things like that is so I'm, I'm just trying to round out the this cube a bit more but I, I still want to maintain that as my my general the, the read of this guy um, let's push the the cheekbones a bit more all right I'm gonna place those teeth in place Just holding control and scaling things. All right, hold control again. Whoops. Come on. I haven't saved, so. All good. All right, we're gonna keep it simple. We're probably gonna move this anyway in a, in a second, um, but we have the base uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold uh, sorry I'm gonna select the move topological brush with the accu curve enable so that I can select let's say this piece um, and in fact let's uh, let's go ahead and do a couple things before doing this um, now let's do it like this <laughs> sorry we're just gonna um, adjust the placement so that these wrinkles are not to um, far out. Like so. There we go. That's about all I wanted to do with the with the move brush. Um, and then I'm gonna take these guys and I'm gonna subtract them. This is where the where the eyes are going to be. And again, we can just place or, or play around with the with the placement of these uh, these spheres to change where the eyes are going to be located. Uh, so again, super easy. Let's go for that. And I think yeah, I think that's good. Uh, so I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna put it into a folder. So the the two toruses that I added and the spheres, and I'll do the same thing with the with the head, I'm going to put it into a new folder and I put the 
mouth bag inside in there, right? So I have two folders. Let's go into Solomon so you can see. So um, turn everything off. So I have in this folder. So in this folder, I have the the head and the mouth bag, and in this other folder, I have the these pieces with the with the spheres. Um, and I'll probably, you know what? Let's put it in the same folder actually, because you can just put this one in here and this one. Uh, below that yep so now the spheres are also uh, subtracting the entire face all right so i'm going to click on this gear icon click on boolean uh boolean folder that will give me this thing that is all combined uh don't worry all of this is going to change in just a bit so that's all good uh and then i have these other pieces that i can combine into one Maybe the, the teeth will remain separate, but this other could be another um, another set. So let's go ahead and add, uh, sorry, let's add a new folder. Put all these three in one gear icon, and I'm just going to match them. Or we can Boolean them, actually. So Boolean folder. All right. So now we have this piece in here. Oh, this, um, this thing here. Actually, let's delete that. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to do it again, but I'm not going to pull in. I'm just going to merge it. I'll, I'll show you why in just a second. So um, this is just merge. Visually, it gives you the same result, but now I have the ability to still move these pieces independently, whereas if I Boolean it, it's just going to um, you know connect all of the intersections, right? So now that I have this, I'm going to append sphere. Again, I promise this would potentially look a lot better in a second once I cover the, the bases. So this is going to be the eyeball. One of the eyeballs. All right, and then I'm going to hold control and do another one here. All right, cool. So now that I have this um, silly base character, what I'll do is I'm gonna take the base, this one right here, and I'm gonna use the move topological. Again, we still have some of the pieces separate, right? So I'm gonna use this to uh, give this guy a bit of expression and maybe some asymmetry, like so. And I think what I'm missing is maybe some of um, some gums for this guy. And I've been working just from one angle, so <laughs> that's why I'm pushing this back a bit. All right. So, um, like I said, we we'll probably have to reposition these guys as well. Uh, but what I want to do before I do that is add, like I said, some gums so I can append a ring 3D. And I'm just going to cut this. So, hold Control and Shift to hide half of it, like so. Delete hidden, or maybe, yeah, let's let's delete hidden. Delete hidden, and then close hole so that it is, you know, it's closed. Uh, those, by the way, those tools, sorry, that is under the um, modified topology. So here on the geometry, basically what I did was I, I hit some parts, uh, click, hit, uh, delete hidden, and then close holes, this one right here. So I have that in my UI, uh, these two here that I use constantly, these two here. Uh, and then I can just mask this. Oh, 
hang on, mask that, invert it, hold control and extrude that a bit. And now I have this that I can, you know, remesh, maybe with symmetry. And that's going to be the, the gums. Again, the, the idea with this process is just to keep everything super, super simple. And let's go ahead and duplicate that, move it down a bit. All right, and then obviously with the move brush. Just adjust it. You can spend a little more time here, just like making it a bit more, you know, perfect, I suppose. But um, I think this works for now. All right, and I'm gonna merge the two gums together, and that's about it. So now, just to start making this this guy to look a bit better, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna select the base, so this bit here, uh, and I'm going to do. You can either do a remesh or a dynamesh. I prefer to do a dynamesh, clean things up a little bit, and then remesh it. So let's uh, duplicate it just so that you have that as a reference. So again, this is, you know, this is what <laughs> this looks at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna click on dynamesh. So now this, maybe with a bit more resolution. So now this is a single mesh or a watertight mesh. Uh, I'm gonna polish everything and then I'm gonna use my smooth brush to smooth things out quite a bit, especially the transitions. All right, so just, just smoothing, nothing else at this point. Um, and once you have this, you can also like start thinking about other, you know, other areas of the of the blockout that you want to tweak. So, for example, if I want to have um, maybe more of a a more distinctive sort of like a bottom lip or something like that, right? Uh, you could do that with maybe the the curve tube. So select the curve tube. Uh, the curve tube by default, the picker should be on one C. So I'm gonna select to that to constant Z, that way it sort of like uh, attaches itself to the surface, right? Um, and also, uh, let's just leave it like, like this and then we can tweak it. So for the, like if I want some lips, I can just go like this, you know, very basic, oops. Try to make sure that it follows line like so, right? Um, and then before I clear my mask, I'm gonna use my um, move brush, it doesn't matter, it's masked anyway. I'm gonna smooth this so it, it transitions nicely into block out. Again, the whole point of this is just to um, to show you the, the ability of, like, you know, you have a lot more room to play around with things when you concentrate on the proportions and the block out of things. Um, all right. And I'm gonna use the inflate brush just to add in more, more volume here. All right, and now I can just go ahead and clear my mask, redynamesh the whole thing, and then smooth everything out. All right, so you see, just by doing that, it's a, it's a very simple process, right? But everything starts sort of like cling together. <laughs> um, then let's go ahead and do something else just to make it more fun, right? So if I want to exaggerate, let's say, the cheeks of this very silly character, very simple, right? Uh, I can bring in, again, the tubes. Let's use the tubes just that we are already, we're already using it. Um, let's go for something like 
this big it's going to be the same size as your brush so i'm going to use this as my starting point like so and that's fine and then what i'll do is i'm going to hold control actually i want to show you something else let's leave it as it is click somewhere just to accept and repeat the process here on the other side Th those are going to be my cheekbones which they, lo they don't look great right now but they will um, all right the other thing I want to do is kind of like exaggerate the expression uh, so like some eyebrows right so I can do I can do something like this whoops um, let's go back to the picker uh, click on 1c so now zero is going to record only one point in depth so I can just do this and if I rotate you see it's gonna be kind of like in a plane so I'm gonna do this like so let's just keep playing around with the asymmetry a bit um, like that and then I'll do the same thing here don't worry this is also gonna look better once I, I show you the next step um, all right so I'm gonna clear the mask so obviously this is part of the same object but because I just added these tubes they're not dynamic yet so I don't want to dynamic so what I'll do is I'm gonna hold control or actually uh, I'll show you what it is so uh, on the polygroups I'm gonna click on auto groups and that basically is gonna give me different groups for each part of the mesh that is not well together so in this case the four pieces of these tubes and now I can easily select my select lasso hold control and shift to select this and I'm gonna sorry uh, go to the split palette here under the sub tool menu click split hidden so now if I get out of solo mode I have this right um, which I will combine soon but I just want to have them separate so that I can use my something like the move topological and and adjust it so I want to use this smooth brush here to just integrate these pieces better so just using the smooth brush and the move brush nothing else it's kind of like work this is the this is the reason I want to show you this as well because um, it's kind of like working with clay you just add these chunks and pieces adjust them a little bit and then you merge everything together right and I will probably want to push this down a bit And exaggerate subtle, like this this line for the expression all right so that's I think that's all right now uh, for these ones let's do the same thing just gonna smooth things out so I can integrate it better And I'll show you some other tricks here. All right. So obviously we have this gap to fill. We could do more of this, um, or we can use a. So with the move topological or any brush really, uh, with the, but in this case the move topological will respect the one that you choose. So if I click here, it's only only gonna move this um, this pink one because there's no continuity with anything else right so uh, the move topological for that reason the other thing that I have enabled is AccuCurve so that gives you that sort of pointy um, yeah pool which you can find on the brush palette uh, curve AccuCurve right here and the third thing I want to do is enable back face masking so as you can see this is in my custom UI and I use this quite a bit in different scenarios uh, for that uh, for that option you can go to the brush palette auto masking back face masking so this is the back face masking is something like the accu curve that um, needs to be activated on a per brush basis so if you change to another another brush and you want or expect the same behavior you need to enable it on that brush that's why I have it in here uh, so what that does is it allows you to manipulate let's say the front of a mesh that is really really thin without affecting the back but when you have the, the move brush it's going to do the same thing and if I click and pull from this area let's say from here when I do that you see it doesn't touch anything else so it's just a very quick way to fill in those gaps
All right. Now I'm going to turn off back face masking and I'm going to smooth everything out a bit. So I don't want it to be like that, that extreme. Right. Um, but yeah, sort of like getting, getting the expression there. And as you can see, like it's, I'm not following a specific design or anything. I'm just like, kind of like designing as I go uh, and trying to get the expression right. But um, that's it, right? Now I can go back and literally combine these two. So um, let's put them into a folder so that we can keep all the, the steps together. And in case you want to go back to the original for whatever reason. So uh, into a folder, gear icon, um, merge folder. So now you have this and I'm just going to Dynamesh the whole thing with maybe more resolution. Maybe not that much. At this stage, still like something, you know, pretty clean. All right. And then just like we did before, smooth everything out a bit. So that is not as blocky. Right, and we're losing a little bit of that um, sort of like very sharp lines, but doesn't matter. We'll we'll fix it in a bit. Um, I just want to show you how I can, you know, how I would go about integrating all of these parts as well. So I will use something like the clay brush uh, with back face masking, so that if I do something really strong here, it doesn't affect the other side as much. So I'm just gonna use this and the smooth brush to fill in those gaps. That's literally what I'm doing, just filling certain areas but keeping everything very smooth and we haven't even um, run the the Siri measure so that's gonna give us another level of control over the surface once we do that um, but for now it's just about tweaking those transitions uh, but for the most part I think that's that's all I wanted to do really so far very little to to no sculpting really. It's mostly just primitives and pulling vertex around just to get this. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can see the, the how powerful this method is. Um, all right. So let's say that um, <laughs> we are kind of happy with this guy at at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna add some ears because yeah, we need some ears. Uh, so for that, let's let's use a cylinder you can use anything really and just shape it into what you want but I think a cylinder in this case would work just fine and I see some activity in the chat I'll Give me one second, I'll have a look and see if there's any questions that you guys might have um, that I can answer. All right, so dynamesh that object, smooth it out. I'm gonna use the move brush, push things in. Very basic. Very basic, um, yeah. All right, so mirror and weld. And let's mix everything up as well. Remesh, or not remesh, but redynamesh. Oops, let's undo that. Let's take advantage of this. This is small part of the, the mesh that still remains symmetrical for the most part, so we can work a bit faster. Alrighty, so <laughs> getting there. Um, I might as well just add a cylinder for the neck. All right, 
very simple. Um, we can also use the clay brush again. Just gonna give this a bit more curvature here, the back. Um, these pieces are from from the gums, which is fine to smooth them out a, li a little bit. I'm gonna push the the mouth back down a bit as well, just to to help the expression. Not too much. There we go. Um, and yeah, just add a bit more volume. Yeah. All right. I think we get in there. Cool. So um, these gums as well. Probably gonna enable dynamic so that I can see a better representation of how this is going to look. Alrighty. Yeah, I think this, I think this is fine. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna actually this. I just realized I want to push this. Back a bit, and this eye is just like losing a little bit of volume, so I'm just gonna add some with this uh, with the inflate brush. All right, so let's say we are fine. We're we're happy with this guy at this point. Um, we've blocked it out the way that we wanted to. So now what I'll do is remesh the whole thing. Right, I want to duplicate it again just to keep that in there. Um, I'm just going to also give it a single group, doesn't really matter. It should give me a pretty good result. This is like a, a rather simple mesh anyway. And I'm just gonna click Siri Mesher with the default uh, settings. So I have adapt on and have is off. And I have a polygon target count of 5,000. So the number is in the thousands, let's see. Um, so Siri Mesher, this number right here, target polygon count is in the thousands, so 5,000 polygons. So you see it's roughly that 6700 and it did a relatively okay job there's a bit of weirdness going on in here so let's give it another go maybe with slightly more polygons and if it doesn't work if it does the same kind of like thing uh, what we need to do is accentuate some of the crevices or like those gaps a bit more but yeah I think it yeah it did a pretty good job I mean, this part could be improved a bit, but generally speaking, it's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, you can you can force it to do like certain loops, like around the mouth in this case. Um, let's, let's try that. Let's undo. Let's undo that. Um, I'm going to use a tool here called the the guides or the zero measure guides, this one right here. So for this, I'm just going to ro go around the mouth very loosely. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just gonna just to give it a, a rough idea of what you want. Um, I think this is the only one that is like could be problematic. That's it. Um, and then we can just go ahead and it has the curve strength set to 50. Let's try that out. So basically, what I, what I just did is to help um, ZBrush understand what I would hope to have some loops in the in the zero measure process and this number of the curve strength of 50 is just going to give like priority to that loop so now at least I have that loop going on there uh, so you could do the same thing let's say if you want something more you know something better but I think you know just for this sketch it works so yeah I'm happy with that um, all right so I'm just gonna Divide this a couple times, get out of solo mode, and turn off these three things, and turn on that sketch that we have. And so we're gonna project those details a bit, just so we have like sharper details. And then I'm just gonna polish things, and that's it. We're gonna subdivide this a few more, so we have. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Uh, and then I'm just gonna refine this very quickly with the smooth brush and we can also use the clay brush as well 
no, I'm gonna press the Alt key just to push this back a bit. Very, very. Um, I, I want to maintain everything very, very clean and smooth. Uh, but now that we have a cleaner topology, it's a lot easier to to maintain that cleanness, especially when you um, go ahead and smooth things out, like so. Um, just gonna push. The profile of these guys is <laughs> it's not great, um, but I think, yeah, I think it works. Um, alrighty, so I'm going to use my HR Geiger Cutter. Uh, this is from the HR Geiger pack, and it's just a, a stronger, more controlled version of the damp standard brush, I think. And it just helps me to cut through the model like so. And I'm also pressing very softly. This this brush is pretty strong, right? If I do that with more um, with more strength, so I'm trying to, to gra like gradually go from hard to soft and vice versa. Um, and the reason I didn't polish this or didn't um, create these crevices or maintain them when I was doing the the Siri mesha is because it is easier for me to just do it like this, like to to sculpt it really, once I have the nice topology. Or it doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but something that if you can follow, let's say the flow of the topology, um, it will just make it a, a cleaner line. All right, do the same thing here. Alrighty, and I mean this whole point, the whole point of this silly character is just to to demonstrate the the, the simple blocking process um, when you're designing something like this. And by the way, this technique as well works really well if you already have a design that you're following. Um, because yeah, you can just block out the the main pieces, like the main volumes, um, and that yeah, that way you can just have full control over the setup, right? Um, okay, so I'm just going to use another tool, another brush, this um, standard brush. Th by the way, just just so you know, these brushes are from this pack, the the Geiger pack. So I'm using the cutter and I'm using. The uh, the standard strong, uh, and you can get that as well from the ZBrush guides as well. So I'm gonna use this one with the Alt key just to push in some nostrils. So these ones should have I should have done it before the Siri measure so that the Siri measure takes into account these these more prominent shapes, but it's okay. It's still it still works. All right. The rest is just a bit of um, you know manual sculpting, refining, and not much. Um, so let's do the same thing for the teeth because uh, they're all you know dynamesh. So I'm just going to set a target of 1,000 and remesh that. The simpler, the better. The easier would be to manipulate them. So that's fine. Maybe even less than that. Yep. And I'm gonna polish by groups. That's okay. Um, I'm also going to enable dynamic so that I can see them subdivided. And the gums as well. I think what I'll do with the gums is I'm going to apply the subdivision and subdivide things a bit. So I basically have a clean topology that has uh, 300,000 polygons for the gums. Um, and I'll, I'll fix that in a bit, but 
I'm just gonna place, uh, yeah, adjust this and use something like this standard brush. And then just add a bit of volume. But again, every time that I add anything with a, either if it is with a standard brush or the clay brush, uh, I make sure that I smooth everything out just to maintain that really smooth surface. And yeah, so if you like, for, exa for example, if you're interested in this type of process as well, um, something that I do a little bit more methodical uh, to approach a more complex character uh, is how I set things up for the uh, Ultimate ZBrush Guide course. Um, and that's a course that if you're, if you're new to ZBrush, that's probably the, the best thing I can recommend from the, from the content that I have out there. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a f you know, very in-depth course covering every aspect of ZBrush. Uh, and we go like a lot more in-depth into the techniques of blocking and, and setting things up with different processes, not just, not just primitives, but, you know, C spheres and all of that. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, I'll, I'll show you in, in a bit where that is. Um, cause that, that will probably give you a, a much better understanding of the tools and, and things like that. So let me just show you actually. So if you, um, if you're in the serious guides, uh, you can just click on this, uh, in the courses here at the top, that will take you to the 3d concept artist website, which is kind of like my academy online and you can click on courses and that one is currently um, open so you can you can join so the big course that i have online is the extra mile course uh that one is not open and i'm not entirely sure when it's going to be open again um but i will let you know if you're part of the email list this this is the one that i'm talking about so if you click on the ultimate zero guide course it will take you here um and you can just click on that take me to the course so this is the character that we work on the Seabrush, the Ultimate Seabrush Guide course. I walk you through everything to from zero, like you don't have to know anything about Seabrush, um, and I cover everything to get to this point with this character. So um, the, the reason I'm mentioning this is because the technique that I'm showing you is just one portion of the different techniques that you can use. There's always one, uh, more, more than three ways of doing the same thing in Seabrush. So the way that we block things out for this character each part is different. So we use Zebra, uh, we use um, Dynamesh, Dynam uh, Sculptures Pro, we use uh, C Spheres, we use uh, Primitive Blocking, similar to what I've been showing you today. Um, and the idea is just to show you the whole range of what you can do with Zebrush, understanding all these concepts in a very, like I said, very methodical step-by-step -step process. Uh, and then you can just, knowing those core um, aspects of how the software works, and how you can approach it, you can literally build anything that you want. So um, yeah, if you're interested in this course, um, it is open, so have a look at that uh, if you want to, but um, we still have like half an hour, so I reckon we can finish this uh, silly zombie guy. So I'm gonna select my gums right now. And again, this is a clean topology, right? We have lots of, you know, polygons, but it is a clean topology. Um, but if I go to the highest subdivision level, you see these sort of like arcs that I created that I sculpted are not following the, um, the topology. It doesn't look bad at the moment, but if you wanted to, you can just remesh it. So I'm going to delete lower. Uh, you don't have to, but I like to do that. Um, and I'm just going to target five, uh, 6,000 polygons and remesh that whole thing. So the zero measure doesn't have to be uh, a tool that you only use when you're reaching that point that um, you're gonna clean things up. It's, it's just on a sketching tool, right? So you can just use and reuse it as many times as you need to, to create, um, yeah, to create your mesh. So now I can just set this to dynamic, uh, maybe apply it, doesn't matter. And as I refine this, now these details of this, these bumps really um, are gonna follow that topology, so it's gonna look it's gonna look a lot better. All right, I'm gonna apply the dynamic solution of the teeth as well. And what I'll do with this, I'm just gonna variate this a bit so that they're not the same. This is a zombie, anyway. Uh, and I'm also gonna use something like uh, this Geiger brush again. Um, 
subdivide this one more time. Go into solo mode. And I'm just going to add some, start, start to add some details. So maybe like a chip tooth or something. Not everywhere, but you know, sometimes it's I like to add these like tiny details. When you know, when and where it makes sense. But I don't want to overdo it. Um, I still want to make sure that this is a very stylized character. All right. So uh, that's about it. Now let's go ahead and add some details here. And I'm thinking with the eyes, they're like floating a little bit too much. So I'm, I'm going to duplicate the same spheres, duplicate those, and I'm going to inflate that. And I'm going to push it back and down. Yeah, there we go. So that that makes more sense. Be inflated a bit more as well. And there we go. And yeah, so now let's go back to this face. And I'm just going to refine the nose a bit. Okay, um, and just to you know wrap the whole thing up, to just to make it a bit more interesting, obviously, um, I'm gonna reduce the, you know, go to the maybe the lowest subdivision level, and I'm just gonna tone down this a bit. So I think now it is a bit too much, and I'm just gonna add a bit more of that roundness here of the of the top bit of the head, so you can see it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay, so now uh, let's do a quick save just in case. Uh, let me have a look at the chat. Um, sometimes inflate pinch smooth redynamic work, but sometimes not. What to do? Oof, that's yeah. That's very hard to answer. Uh, it really. I mean, for me, it works most of the time. It's just, it depends. It, it is a very specific, um, in a very specific scenario. So I don't know how to answer that. What's the difference? So, Rhiannon, what's the difference between hard surface and organic sculpting workflows? How can you make this hard surface look hard surface and organic look organic so that it doesn't look like neither? Um, I think the the workflows are, for me at least, are the same. It's just how you polish things. Uh, I I mean the I think the the question kind of like answers the gives you the answer. Like a, a a hard surface is like when you have a very polished, clean cuts and and sharp edges, for example. In in terms of the, I, I mean, you could say that this is a hard surface. <laughs> just if you were to polish things a bit more, right? Um, just to give you an example, if I were to just convert this into a robot or something, I can just go like this, right? And then, I mean, obviously this is not great, but um, I can add a couple of crevices here. And I would say that this would, this is now a hard surface model, 
uh, but it's just about how you polish it. So like all of these cuts, I will just go ahead and refine them like this. But for me, the, the, the process is exactly the same. It's just how you polish things. So I don't know if that answers the question, sorry. It's just, again, the, the workflows is uh, the same in my, in my mind. Um, it's more about how you, how you approach the, the polishing state or the stages. So you can do for the workflow, in terms of workflow, you can do the same thing for both um, hard surface and organic. And then just um, when you get to polishing or doing the retopology, uh, just do more more manual retopology for the hard surface, I would say. Uh, whereas the, the organic, you can just get away with, yeah, just using the Siri measure. I don't know if that answered the question, sorry. Um, All right, so let's do a um, a wrap up. We have like about 20 minutes, so we can just make this look a lot better with some poly paint and make it more like a zombie. So I'm gonna select my standard brush, turn it into a painting brush, and turn on the skin shade four. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a green shader, or like a green color. And that's, you know, that's almost, all we need to do. Uh, I want to click on the compute button and this compute button for you guys is under the ZBrush uh, C plugin palette, uh, a ambient occlusion compute. So that computes the ambient occlusion of what, whatever you have. And I'm going to invert the mask. I'm going to hide it. And I'm now going to use a darker tone of green, fill the object a couple of times just to target those, um, those areas. And I'll do the same thing. Let's compute it again, invert it. And I'm going to go for a bluish tone. Uh, but this time I'm not going to fill the object. I'm going to manually just add some, some bits and pieces and variation to that. So. All right, clear the mask. Um, and let's go ahead, you know, even though it is a zombie, would have some, some parts enable symmetry as well that are more like red than others so a bit of the neck as well uh, definitely inside here the eyes um, can go for something a bit more something red All right, and I think these spheres that we're using kind of like as, as eyelids can go almost with the same tone. And same tone as well for like the, the gums. I'm going to fill that object, but I'm also going to add a bit more of a purple tones just to make them more like a, like a beyond death. <laughs> Something like that. And of course, the inside of the mouth. Um, this brush also works well with the back face masking. So if I do this, I'm pressing really hard, but then you'll see it's not doing anything at the back. So you can do that. Uh, but let's do it with more of this color. But yeah, hopefully you see that once you have the block out, once you have the, the, the main volumes and a, a cleaner topology, the rest is, it's a lot of fun. And you can, you know, if you wanted to, you can add as many details as you want for this guy, but uh, for the, this style, I don't think the, the, the style necessarily goes well with a lot of, a lot of details. I think this works best as simple and you can add more complexity just with color as I'm doing right now. Um, 
All right, and for the teeth, let's go for a yellow, yellow tone, maybe like a lighter one, fill object. Uh, and then I'm going to use the compute as well for this, invert it, and then target a darker tone. And that's fine. Alrighty, and then for the eyes, let's go for something yellow as a base, maybe a bit more intense. Fill that object and also utilize some of the colors here at the bottom. Um, also, I'm going to subdivide this a few times. So I'm just using a bit of the, the same color that I use for those eyelid or eye bags uh, so that the transition is not as harsh. All right, um, and then I'm gonna make the eyes lighter. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, I think that works. That's fine. Uh, um, Let's um let's do a bit more of um add more contrast here in certain areas. But again, I, I don't wanna I just wanna subtle but changes in values, not not too much. Um but yeah I think you know very very simple uh, technique <laughs> and once you get comfortable with this um, you can just yeah you can just run with it uh, I think maybe making the the lip a little bit darker like bluish can work and try that All right, and just to to wrap it up because we have about ten minutes left. Um, if there is, you know, if there's some questions um, you guys want to ask, by all means, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some eyebrows just to add to the expression of these guys. So I'm gonna append a, a cylinder. I'm gonna use the same technique I just showed you guys before for the the wrinkles. So something like that and taper. And then we can just go ahead and do bend arc. Accept. I'm also going to bend this um, this way. And I'm going to fill it with a gray color. Maybe the, the eyebrows can be floating. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We'll control. And I'm just going to uh, remesh this whole thing. Dynamic. And then just add a bit more. Hang on. Fill object. Then add a bit of darkness towards the tips. Yeah, so maybe the expression is because of his eyebrows <laughs> being lifted up that high. Um, all right, I think that works. And um, yeah, so that is that is the zombie as I see it. Um, I'm gonna save quick save that. Let me know if there uh, any questions at all. Uh, we can just take this like five minutes of the stream to answer any specific question that you have, whether it is about the techniques that I show you today or something else that I can easily show you um, on the spot. So, um, 
fast transition. Um, how to do how to do eyebrows mask? Uh, I just did some eyebrows. So that's one way of doing eyebrows or one type of eyebrows. Um, Alan, how do you come up with the ideas on what you make? Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> so I just wanted to do a zombie. Um, you know, this is kind of like the first iteration. So, you know, I don't, I don't have anything in particular that I'm using as reference right now. But if I wanted to do something a bit more, uh, more thorough, I would probably use a bunch of more reference and try to come up with something more, more unique than just a green, scared zombie. Um, yeah. It's just I I draw inspiration from a whole bunch of different things, so it it really depends. Uh, is the calculation of the ambient occlusion for all subtools simultaneously? Um, yeah, I think so. I'm if I'm getting the question right, yes. So if I were to uh, let's turn this off. So if I select this uh, character again and go ambient occlusion and then I go into solo mode um, I mean it does it's not like it takes into account the the, the areas or like the collision areas of the of the other meshes is that what you're asking so like you can have them all on or off but you can do it in all the subtools it's not going to do a calculation on each subtool if that makes sense it's just on the one that you have selected but the other ones have no um, no impact on them because the, the what the ambient occlusion is it's like a, a much more accurate version of the previous AO that you could also get from uh, the masking palette. You could mask by, um, by ambient occlusion. So let's just do that and go into solo mode. So this is the ambient occlusion beforehand, maybe more intense, right? Um, so it's not as accurate because what it does really this mask by AO uh, or this older version is kind of like a a blur cavity masking so you see it just tries to find where there is like a very sharp distinction or like very sharp change of direction so like in the crevices and it masks them out and blur them uh, whereas this compute it actually does a, a much better um, you know ambient so if you go to the C plugin palette right here um, you can do the Let's, let me just show you something. So I'm going to clear that. I'm going to go to occlusion volume. Uh, compute that. There we go. Right. So now the, the occlusion volume, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but this occlusion volume is going to now look at, for example, where the, um, yeah, where the, where the gums were. And uh, you can kind of see a little bit of that difference here um, around here like the eyelids that I had so now it is 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 taking into account those those subtools because it's doing a, a ray tracing of the amino occlusion based on the volumes if that's I don't know if that's your question hopefully that answers it but you can control that all from here from the amino occlusion and the distance and the the smoothness and you know the resolution all of that in in one uh, in one place I use this quite a bit, especially for uh, poly painting. Um, so that's why I have it here in my in my UI. This other occlusion is just like a preview that you can add, and that is from the render palette. You can open up this BPR, uh, not sorry, that one, the preview AO. So that's that switch that I have in my UI, and you can just control the quality of that ambient occlusion, the radius, or how much you're spreading that first or main and secondary radius bit of blurriness and that's it so it's just like a preview thing sometimes it's it's kind of cool to look at it um i i use it to to kind of like test how much uh how intense the uh, the crevices that i'm adding are so if i'm working on something that has no poly paint something like this right i just check with this ambient occlusion if i'm getting things right because if i were to add something that is super strong the ambient occlusion in turn is going to be pretty strong like that right oh i kind of like this idea hang on <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna add a bit of a cut there 
Ja. Some last minute artistic decisions, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Hishman Hayes, thanks for all the useful Zeroge guys. No worries. I'm glad that, um, yeah, that the content that I share is, is useful. Appreciate it. Um, if you can render it with the AO, what would, if you can render it with that AO, that would be awesome. Can you export the, that as a map? If you can render it with AO, um, sorry. If you can render it with a, I mean, yeah, like you can you can compute that ambient occlusion, and then you can render it. And you, the, this ambient occlusion it computes a real uh, ray trace ambient occlusion, but it's also a mask. That's why I use it that often because you can just it just creates a mask. So if you wanna export that mask, all you have to do is do a polypane. So for example, um, if I just clone this to show you, um, ambient occlusion. Let's actually fill it with just a white color so you can see ambient occlusion and invert that when I use dark color fill object clear. This is the like a polypaint ambient occlusion. And if I were to make UVs for this guy really quickly, um, done, have UVs. Now I can go to the mask, uh, sorry, I'm not masking, texture map, click on create mask from polypaint. And now I have this as a yeah, as an ambient occlusion, obviously the UVs are rubbish, but um, this is now a texture, a black and white texture, as an ambient occlusion that you can export and use it in a different render. Hopefully that's the question. Sorry if it's not, but if not, it that's another tool or you know another another trick um, there for you. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Just as a as a reminder, the uh, the brand new challenge is up and running. Uh, and it's really cool. That's the reason why I show you uh, this this guy, Edgar Allan Poe, updated version. Uh, I use that as a reference for the new uh, the new challenge. So if you want to, um, you can go to the Zeroes guides, and I think I showed it already somewhere here. Anyway, you go to the to the homepage and you click on this um, little card here. Uh, we try to update this card often so that you know you you're up to date with anything that is happening. So, uh, you know, if you save like a shortcut to the Zbrush guides in your desktop or in, uh, in your browser uh, and you go regularly in there, you can just quickly check in here and that will give you like the latest updates of what's happening. So this links to, you know, either a new resources like this uh, clay pack material or a new tutorial or, you know, whatever else, right? So in this case, um, you can click on this one and that will send you to the news of this challenge and you can click on learn more that would open up the discord channel where um, we have all the information in there but you know it's also in here so if you want to participate just with um, you know Twitter or um, Instagram you can use these hashtags um, and then the deadline is December the 17th so that's um, we usually run them for a, like every month for like a month time but this time we we thought you know it's like a really cool idea I think so you have more time to 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 work on your um, character or whatever it is really. It doesn't have to be a character. It could be just a prop or an environment. Uh, the idea is that is to take any of your uh, old work, uh, a previous work that you've done and then remake it so that, uh, and just like a side by side to just kind of like show off your skills. Um, but that's it. Uh, hopefully that is of help. Let's go back to my zombie guy here. And yeah, I'll leave it here. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you in a couple of weeks, um, I hope. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, and by the way, there are a couple of, well, there's a new tutorial uh, with the clay in case 
you're not familiar with what I just <laughs> mentioned before, uh, you can just go to the Zero's Guides or in my YouTube channel, there, it's in there. And I have a couple of really cool tutorials coming up as well. Uh, one of them is like a, an awesome tip as well. Uh, so yeah, just if you subscribe to that channel as well, I can let you know when new uh, tutorials are coming up. Uh, what level do you keep your tablet to do to find the most comfortable to use? Uh, the Cintiq. I uh, I change I change it depending on I have an standing desk, so if I I'm standing right now I'm sitting down, but if I'm standing, uh, it will be at a different angle. So yeah, just 45 degrees. I don't know. <laughs> That's it depends on on what you find. Um, yeah, sometimes I get tired of like having my my elbow like like this, and yeah, it just depends on. I change it basically. That's the answer. I change it depending on what I feel. Um, alrighty. Thank you guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.